Hi, this is Kevin. Um, I'm here with Arani at, uh, in Woodlands and we're here to check out this place called uh, Kampong Admiralty which is uh, a kind of shopping mall in, in uh, Woodlands. And one thing about this shopping mall it has is that it has this secure my bike or bike parking kind of thing. And those of you might have probably seen uh, these underground bike parking videos of, of Japan's system and we have one here now. Uh, and so there are three points. We went to the wrong one. Actually, we went to the other one over there and there's another one somewhere else. There are three parking points uh, within this building itself. Okay. And uh, it's actually kind of like a drum. You can see the underground parking system, a cylinder where your bike gets slotted in automatically and all that. So the parking rate seem okay, the free trial's over, but uh, you can see that it has three drums, which are kind of like forms the pillars of kind of underground of this building. Um, there are seven layers per drum, 24 cells per layer. So you can accommodate like 167 bikes per drum and because of the three drums, you get 501 bikes that can park in there. Of course, people are still very much used to parking their bikes outside because it's way simpler, but hopefully over time people will get it. Um, so we're going to take a look. Uh, first of all, it's secured. You know, for those of us who ride more expensive bikes, naturally we'll be more careful. And bikes that have panniers or baggage around it, you don't want people to take stuff away. So this is great for us. Coming all the way to Woodlands, you know, you can park and then explore. It's sheltered, so not in the rain or sun, and uh, pretty convenient. So let's go try it out. Okay, so what happens is when you come in, and if ever this gets popular, there's kind of like a marker here for a queue, okay, this area and uh, you kind of like wait your turn and then what you have to do is uh, before you can use the machines these drums you have to register yourself uh, on the system right like so release your kickstand insert your bike press the ok button and all that there's a kind of uh, system inside it operates from 7 a.m to 10 p.m and there's a sizing requirement here it even allows for a child seat up to 110 cm so that's good allows for baskets the sizing is about 30 cm in front and 70 cm behind or actually in the front kind of weird because most of us might have panniers in the back and the length is about 2 meters 190 cm thereabouts so let's take a look inside so you can really put your bike here while you go um, register yourself so you see technically opens on 5th gen and uh, here Arani is really registered. System is quite appears to be quite straightforward. There's four languages. And uh, how long did it take you to register? Did it require anything funny? No, it requires your uh, name, IC, date of birth, and postal code. Oh, okay. That's quite a lot of info. Okay. And after that, once you're in, hopefully you register. Uh, it works on your phone, is it? Uh, I'm supposed to send you a pin, but I haven't received the pin. Ah, yeah. So okay. I thought I'll just try. Yeah. Then I'll actually need a pin to be sent to my phone first. So you kind of have to wait. Uh. Yeah. Okay, so Arani's entered her pin. She got her pin from the system already. A, a nice uh, gentleman came by to enable the system. Because I think at some point the system was just hung for a while. But it looks like they got over it. Okay, can hear the sound of the mechanism open, starting up. Stepping back just to show you a better view. And uh, if you look inside, there's grooves for your wheel. And it's it, thin on the inside, so you have to go in by the rear, put the rear in. And her bike is very simple, so it's easier. So this whole cell belongs to you, as in you can put your helmet and everything inside, it'll be fine. And so she's saying goodbye to her bike. It's almost like cremation. And she says, okay, let's terminate. <laughs> so it goes in. And what's it doing? It says door closing. Checking items. So it's doing some sort of scan. Maybe it's checking that everything's okay. Oh, you can no hear dogs. the sound. Parking successful. Done. Is it? <gasps> <laughs> okay, nothing exciting here, but yeah, so it's all done. looks like it's Excellent. done. But it should tell you like it's parked or like everything's okay, you can go now, but it's still it's still doing something. Okay, so 
Okay, done. Yeah, but it should be nicer, you know, like, thank oh. you, but not like, just like, leave you like that. Okay. Alright, so, um, here I've got my big bike, and uh, this one's really pushing the limits a little bit because there's actually panniers and racks and stuff. So, if you look at the access point here, so I've got the cell open, this got a cell. There are grooves for your wheel to go in, and uh, you're supposed to go in from the rear first. And it's quite big, even fat bikes should be able to go in. Uh, mountain bikes with huge handlebars should be worth it. And, uh, I In now, there's plenty of room at the back. My bike's pretty long and big, um, and so I'm gonna just go hit, hit OK on accept the load in the system, and the door is closing. Bye bye. So it's just checking items, it's checking the bicycle and items. I think it's doing some sort of scan, and it says parking successful. Um, so at this point, you're supposed to leave it, but it's clearly going to move it down into the, the drum, the right place to store the bike, and uh, you're good to go. So you just use your PIN number on your uh, mobile phone, you can change the PIN anytime. Um, these operating hours are just the customer service, it's supposed to work 24-7, and there's hourly rates and monthly rates. Uh, right now it's like 25 cents per hour, which is very affordable. So this is Kampong at Maruti, which is a uh, kind of integrated development at Woodlands and it's kind of like they're all in one mall and when we came in, we came in from this side we went here, the bike parking wasn't ready but apparently it was on this side that it was but clearly the mobile pin didn't get sent to us so we can't put our bikes in kind of a failure though and uh, now we're just exploring on the inside but you can see that this whole building has HDB that's on the top and then there's a hooker and all that stuff on the second floor with some eateries below uh, there is some sort of elder care facilities here childcare center medical center it's pretty good so there's and the MRT station is down here too it's a function hall and all that stuff so it's quite nice this is what it looks like you can see the ground floor has Starbucks most for the upper floor has uh, some sort of hawker thing it's open air it's good save energy no need for air conditioning so we parked our bikes over there, upstairs there, the drum is below and uh, this side also actually there's one, it's not ready yet but uh, took the stairs up, this is the second floor and you can see that uh, it's actually kind of like a hawker centre kind of bike with a return your own train property kind of system here everything's going to be lightweight, sustainable and all that stuff uh, but basically very, very big space and uh, airy so you don't need air conditioning which is great um, yeah, I think the space is very welcome and the variety of food and all that. The second floor is very nice. So yeah, I mean, this mall has stuff to go to and uh, the housing is on the upstairs, right? The, the, all the flats are above us, so that's how it works. Alright, let's tuck in. Okay, yeah, we just had lunch at the second floor where there's a hawker centre food court kind of deal. And uh, at this place, Kampong Emirati, there's actually, uh, you can see that there's one bike parking area and two more over here. This is where you got, kind of go and get registered. Then all the eatery and the shoe market and all that stuff is over here. Now connected to all this is actually the, there's a supermarket as you can see, the basement and the MRT is down here. Otherwise there's the other mall here as well. So we have 24 McDonald's and KFC. So this whole place is starting to liven up. Uh, not all the spaces are tenanted yet, but uh, it's fully integrated. There's a medical center on the second floor. You can see there. Yeah, on the second floor, childcare and all that kind of stuff. 
so it's quite a lot of things and remember above us is actually all the HDB flats not bad this place is pretty cool okay we're about to go collect our bikes so hopefully it's all in one piece right yeah yeah okay hi okay we just had lunch here at uh, Kampong Admiralty and we're about to retrieve our bike from the underground parking so one thing I'll do I'll just say start here then I'll punch in my mobile number okay And after it will ask for my pin. And then now I'll say pay and retrieve. There's also a monthly pass, but I'll just pay and retrieve. And it says that uh, it's 50 cents for one hour to three minutes. So it's about 25 cents per hour as of now, this moment. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll give you the option of easy link or next fast pay or credit card debit card. So I'll just select the credit card. And then now it says this one here, you can tap, choose 50 cents. I'm just going to tap my uh, master card pay pass. It's done, approved. And now it's just going to go ahead and retrieve the bike. That's it. So it's quite straightforward. Now we just wait for the bike to show up. It takes a few seconds. It's quite a lot of seconds. Yeah, I hear it coming. So exciting, right? Hopefully it's in one piece. It's not replaced. So I really hope this is gonna be normal everywhere in Singapore. Of course, right now it's still a new thing, so people have to get used to it. But uh, this is super convenient. And I guess am I supposed to say okay? I guess I say okay. I'm done. And there you go. It's going that's it, so it's very convenient and uh, it'd be awesome if this, this bike parking thing is all over Singapore, especially the city and all that, and commute to work. And uh, it's peace of mind, you know, you don't lock your bike out there and, and pray that it doesn't get stolen or parts get ripped off. This thing is really secure, so it's a good job LTA. Thanks. We've kind of had the whole experience of uh, taking our bikes into and out of the underground parking. The whole system is pretty awesome. Um, a lot of us have actually seen those Japanese videos where um, you see Japan and their wonderful underground bike parking and all that and uh, what we learned from some of the engineers and people who happen to be here is that this system is actually way simpler and way more compact so you can actually pack more bikes underground like in this case this whole establishment here which has three drums for storage of the cells can accommodate about 105, uh, no, 501 bikes which is quite a lot in a small area uh, and it doesn't take up any more room, so it's all underground. The other thing is that, unlike other bike, underground bike parking system or above ground automated bike parking systems, they usually, if you watch the videos carefully, they usually have a, a kind of clamp mechanism that comes up, grabs the wheel and pulls your bike back. And uh, you're supposed to stay out of the way and all that. So all that moving arm, all the contraptions actually complicate the whole uh, 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 setup and uh, can make it quite challenging to maintain such a system. So the system here, if you watch the video just now in the photos, you see that it's just a very big uh, empty uh, cell where there's kind of like grooves on the floor for you to move your wheels into and you can just push your whole bike in. Nothing to grab, nothing to lose. The whole cell is yours. You put your bag there, you can put your helmet there. And uh, it's pretty simple. In terms of maintenance from the management stand and even your side, it's so much simpler and you don't have to fear about parts breaking out down and your bike being tampered with and all that. So it's all peace of mind for everybody. Um, the other thing is that it incorporates several things that are quite interesting. Um, it has uh, three sensors in there, a metal detector to detect that your bike is in there. Uh, it also has a movement detector. Once the door closes, right, if there's no movement, then it knows that kind of there's no living thing in there. So whether it's a human being or um, uh, an animal, a pet, at least it'll know for a while whether or not there's anything that's moving. If it's not moving, then it'll, it'll carry on going down or going up. Uh, so that's that security. And the last thing is a weight sensor. If you happen to step into the cell and it goes above the normal weight of a bike, uh, it also triggers a third sensor. So there are these three sensors to detect 
whether there are unauthorized objects in there. Um, so that scanning portion is actually kind of measuring whether there's movement or not. Okay, so um, other than that, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, the whole experience is pretty good. I had, currently, it's the whole registration and payment system that um, I guess is going through some motion here. Uh, if you look at the original system, uh, it was designed for you to just tap a nice uh, your ID card, it could be your passion card, easy link card and all that, where it will recognize you and it will deduct payment. But for now, it requires the use of things like uh, your mobile phone to get a PIN. It also requires you to uh, either use an easy link card or a credit card to pay pass or swipe or whatever. The whole point is that there's kind of extra steps right now in order to try and get uh, more people on board faster. So I'm hoping that over time, the whole thing will be more streamlined. That's the only thing that kind of tripped us up. It took us a while to get the pin at first. But I'm sure as time goes on, it will only improve. Um, so what does this mean? Uh, with less space available in Singapore, and Singapore, we reach a limit as to how much space it can build, you know, how much sand we can we get after all. Um, there will be a limit to uh, how much space we have. And uh, things like this actually makes our life simpler. It's also peace of mind for those of us who want to ride to work and all that uh, and to not have to carry everything, just go into this underground parking, let it go down, you're free to roam the shopping mall, explore the city, what, what not, or explore the district right now in Woodlands and then come back and retrieve later. Payment schemes are pretty uh, reasonable, right now it's 25 cents per hour. I saw that the normal rate is going to be 45 cents an hour, otherwise you can go for a monthly rate which I saw something like $22 or, or more. But, uh, that gives you almost unlimited use in a sense. Um, so it's pretty fair uh, for what it's asking for and uh, looking forward to more of this. So please use these things, get the government, get the people, get more people on board uh, with these things and um, really hoping that we can see more of such uh, parking facilities all over town, all over Singapore, making Singapore a real car-like uh, city and country. All right, thanks a lot.